for those people to be accused then of these heinous crimes and these are heinous crimes How many say, no, 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 I prefer to stay on the atypical scheme? These are the questions that need to be asked. And if they're not asked, then this injustice and this travesty of where good people's reputation are maligned and absolutely destroyed will continue. The atypical scheme that is to legalise workers in the Irish fishing industry that come from outside the European Union. It was a scheme that was brought in to address some allegations within the industry that lads working in the industry from outside Europe were being mistreated. We have found since the introduction of that atypical scheme that there are flaws in the system and one of those flaws is, is that if one of these lands finds themselves out of a contract and they don't go home, it's virtually impossible, it is impossible for them to get a new contract unless they go home. So you have organisations saying that if somebody has pity on these guys, tries to apply for the, through the system that's there with them on board the boat, treats them equally with the other crew members that they're working in on site by giving them the exact same financial remuneration and treatment um, as their fellow crewmen are actually deemed to be on the other side of the law. And there is allegations then straight away from organisations that you're a trafficker automatically. So regardless, no matter what you have done, you're a trafficker. It is unbelievable that somebody could cast that label on somebody that's actually trying to do right by these lads who are in the process of trying to le legalise these lads and the only feeling that they have is that they can't force these lads to go home because they've been told by these crewmen that if they go back to their countries the authorities there will say well you were illegal and you're not getting the chance to be illegal again so they don't allow them to leave the country and they know this so they don't want to go home and they don't go home but then this is um, believed to be trafficking, this is the belief to be abuses, this is the belief to be um, an unholy activity for somebody to take these lads on and as I said, not treat them under the conditions of the atypical scheme but treat them equally to their fellow crew member. Again, if one of these lads find themselves in Ireland and they're outside of the scheme as it is. And I want to stress this. Who is asking? Who is insisting? Who is specifying that these guys have to be deported home before they can apply for the scheme again? It isn't the boat owner. It isn't the industry. Who's asking for it? Because that's the only way that these guys can be brought back into the system by the boat owner. No. Here's the, here's the crux, if there's a complaint made, automatically the state's responsibility kicks in and they automatically get the required documentation and paperwork that they no longer requires them to sign up to an atypical scheme and they can, guess what, go into the share system. So here's my question, how many with those documentation have refused to go into a share system and want to stay in the atypical system. So, just to emphasise the points that I was making earlier on, when there's a, a, a lack of legal documentation, it's our duty in our organisation to try and fill that gap. So there was new, 10 new statutes introduced in the last two years under the ILO. It's an international convention that looked after workers' rights. So we put together this, a cruise agreement and a ship's log to meet 
the most recent requirements that were introduced in September of 2020. This now would be a crew agreement. So what's included in this is work hours, that you have looked at the vessel safety statement, that you're au fait with how the boat operates, your food and accommodation is covered, your um, contract, um, your health and social security is covered, an event of sickness, what, what you have agreed with the boat, there's a dispute resolutions procedures. It lists it out here on this page. If you have a dispute, all the different avenues you have to pursue a resolution. And if you fail, we provide the Marine Survey Office address. All the articles are covered here. Food, provisions, cleaning products, diesel, termination of agreement. Everything and anything that was covered under legal things to look after these lads is here. The owner, master of the vessel either signs it, it's signed by the crew member and it's witnessed. This is the crew's agreement. And the logbook, designated persons ashore, vessel trip log, safety equipment, all the lists, mandatory drills, crew's agreement, as I said, in here, all the different crew's agreements, right down to the records of rest periods, to all other legal documents that are required for to fish in a boat. This is the work and the effort that our organisation, our members and the people that are part of our organisation comply with. We do not stand for mistreatment of crew members. We do not stand for abuses in our industry. The public has to understand, if you don't have properly well-trained crew, you're not going to see. The environment is of the most dangerous place that you can work. You cannot be going out there without the right people on board your boat. You work as a team, you work as a family, and you work together. It just makes absolutely disgusting the recent allegations against one of our members to the extreme measures that that girl did in her time inside in that boat.